Here comes Solar Maximum, presented by Science at NASA. Only 93 million miles from Earth, a certain G-type star is beginning to act up. Every 11 years or so, the solar cycle brings a period of revved-up solar activity. Giant islands of magnetism, sunspots, break through the stellar surface in increasing numbers. Sometimes they erupt like a billion atomic bombs going off at once, producing intense flares of X-rays and UV radiation, and hurling massive clouds of plasma toward Earth. This is happening right now. Only a few years ago, the Sun was in a state of deep quiet. But as 2012 unfolds, the pendulum is swinging. Strong flares are becoming commonplace as sunspots once again pepper the solar disk. Forecasters expect the cycle to peak in mid to late 2013. Fortunately, Earth is defended from solar storms by a strong global magnetic field. Researchers call it the magnetosphere, a bubble of magnetism that springs from the planet's core and extends at least 80,000 kilometers in all directions. In March 2012, those magnetic defenses were tested. At the very beginning of the month, a remarkable sunspot appeared on the sun's eastern limb. AR-1429, as experts called it, was an angry-looking region almost as wide as the planet Jupiter. Almost as soon as it appeared, it began to erupt. During the period of March 2nd to March 15th, it rotated across the solar disk and fired off more than 50 flares. Three were X-class flares, the most powerful kind. As the eruptions continued, Earth's magnetosphere was buffeted by coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. One of those clouds hit so hard, the magnetosphere was sharply compressed, leaving geosynchronous satellites on the outside looking in. For a while, the spacecraft were directly exposed to solar wind plasma. Charged particles propelled by the blasts swirled around Earth, producing the strongest radiation storm in almost a decade. Particles raining down on the upper atmosphere dumped enough energy in three days alone to power every residence in New York City for two years. Bright auroras circled the poles, and northern lights spilled across the Canadian border into the United States. It sounds dramatic, but when all was said and done, the defenses held. No harm done. More storms are likely as Solar Max approaches in 2013, and some of them could have potent consequences. Solar storms have been known to disable satellites, cause temporary radio blackouts and power outages, and interfere with GPS signals. Some laypeople worry that even worse things might happen, like the end of the world. These concerns are prompted in part by stories about the ancient Mayan calendar, which supposedly ends on December 21st, 2012. In fact, the Mayan calendar doesn't really end in 2012, but that's another story. The key point is, solar flares cannot destroy the Earth. Our planet has been orbiting the Sun for about 4.5 billion years, weathering solar storms that entire time. Anyone older than the age of 11 has lived through at least one solar maximum, and most retirees have lived through five or six. As powerful as solar flares are, our planet's defenses are equal to them. Solar Max is coming in 2013. Enjoy the show. For more news about solar activity and what it means to you, visit science.nasa.gov.